Hey guys, Ernie here, Paleo Hiker MD, and today we're going to talk about the family bug out bag. Now, this is my take on a family bug out bag, and this is our particular bag. I'll show y'all what we use to put it together and the things that we include in it. Now, I'll emphasize to you guys that this bag is kind of an always a work in progress, and I really want to stress that you are always changing things, you're always trying to make things better. So, Tonight we're going to go over our family bug out bag and we hope you guys find this informative. So let's see how it goes. Alright guys, so before we even dig into this bag, let's talk a little bit about one thing. Now there's another video that I've put out about my everyday carry bag or my get home bag. Now I designed this particular bag with two assumptions. First, that I would have my everyday carry bag with me because I should have it. Second of all, we have two other sort of bug out bags in the house. They're not as big or complex and they really just contain our clothing. So the kids have one bag, it contains clothing for each of them, a blanket for warmth, and a couple of little toys, stuffed animals, stuff like that that we switch out over time. My wife and I have the similar bag. It's a backpack, it has our clothes, it has a blanket for warmth, um, and we combine those with this main bug out bag with all of our stuff. This is kind of a 72 hour bag. It could last longer if needed, but that's really what we're, we're planning it for. Now, as you guys can see, this is actually in a food insurance backpack. Now, normally I would have probably put this together myself, but we actually found this backpack complete on eBay for like $60. And I think it retails for about $200. So we jumped on top of it, and that's why we have it. And the backpack really isn't that bad. This thing's pretty heavy, and I can pack it pretty easily. So we're going to start by going around the outside of the bag, and then we'll take a look at the inside. So let's do it. All right, guys, there's two parts. There's two outside pockets. Right now, there's nothing in this outside pocket. And the reason is it's not mesh, so it's really tight. And it's hard to get anything in there. Now, on this side over here, I have two trash compactor garbage bags. These are really tough garbage bags. We can use them for almost anything. And I like them a lot better than just the standard garbage bags because they're so much tougher. I also keep my relatively new Vargo titanium hexagon wood stove as an alternative way to boil water. We'll look at my primary way to boil water inside. But this is an alternative way to boil water because of course we are using the food insurance dried food, freeze-dried food, and basically we need boiled water to make that happen. So two ways to boil water in this bag. One is this Vargo stove. I use this backpacking too, so I kind of put it in and out, but it's usually in here whenever I'm not using it somewhere else. So that's the side bag. We'll go ahead and start right here too. This is another side pocket. A lot of storage on these backpacks, really good storage. This particular side has uh, it's one large camp towel, camp towel, excuse me, that I cut in half and just something easy for everybody to be able to wash their face, clean themselves up. We have similar things in the individual clothing bags, but this is just, you know, it's good to have that stuff. I just have some paracord. I have some sporks, three of these Cricut Eaton Tool sporks. Uh, I found them on eBay for really cheap for a lot of three of them, so I bought them. And then this is just a regular Johnson & Johnson um, first aid kit, but I've kind of doctored it a little bit. And it has the standard gauze and alcohol wipes and all that stuff, but I included as well some children's Tylenol, chewables, 
some a pretty good amount of Aleve and Tylenol. So we have kind of pain relief for both adults and kids. I'm going to pack this back up and we'll go to the other side. All right, guys, so now we're on the other side. This is the side, again, that has a really tight compartment that I don't have anything in right now. We will undo this. This is a kind of a tool side. I do have some extra cordage. I have a lot of cordage. Um, I just happen to have it. I don't know if we'll ever need this much, but right now it's what I have. I may change it out for other things. I have a kind of mini pry bar. You guys can see that. And this thing is super handy. Got it from a friend one year and can really help uh, pull nails out, get inside of doors, whatever it might be. And you can get a pretty good amount of leverage with this. I have just your standard um, razor blade. I have a pretty nice and pretty extensive sewing kit, which is helpful when you have kids, you have any problems, when you have limited clothing, when you have a, a problem with that, then obviously this becomes important. This also has a nice little scissor. As you can see, it has plenty of needles and stuff to sew with. It even has a little measuring tape, which is multi-use as well. Kind of go along with that, I have a whole pack of 20 um, safety pins. These things are great to put clothes together, hold things together, whatever it might be. And lastly, I have a pack of um, zip ties. Never know when you'll need more zip ties. So let me pack this back up and we'll go to the inside. Actually, we'll go to the top and then we'll go to the inside. All right, guys, so up front here is kind of where our technology lies. Um, and we'll look at this before we go inside. In here, we have water purification tablets, some uh, two-way radios, and extra AA and AAA batteries. We also have our emergency radio. Now this is an emergency radio that uh, bought off of Amazon. In fact, it was a gift from my wife. It has a radio function, it has solar for charging it, it has a light, it also has a crank. You guys can see it will crank it up. Um, it will also charge through its battery, it will charge a cell phone. It has a micro USB that can hook up to uh, an iPhone or whatever it might be. And uh, it also comes, this is just the bag I have for something else but it comes with uh, all the wires it needs but I have in here just a USB to charge the actual battery inside as well as just the instructions just so that we know how to do it just in case but this particular weather uh, and emergency radio is is really good had great reviews on Amazon and uh, another item that my wife uh, sneakily found on my wish list on Amazon and bought for me but it really does everything we need from the standpoint of an emergency radio. So I'll pack this back up and then we'll go inside. And I'll emphasize to you guys again, this food insurance bag is actually really nice. It's not lightweight, but it has a lot of storage and that's really what you want. These side pockets are big, they hold a lot of stuff. So now we'll kind of go to the top over here. This does have one pocket uh, up on top. I'm gonna flip this over. This is kind of on the back side. And in here I have a full size flashlight, which obviously everybody can use. I also have a full size and very bright headlamp. I have just a zip, mini Ziploc full of uh, cotton balls, uh, basically for tinder more than anything, just to get things going if we need a fire and we can use this. Uh, I can usually easily use it with the Vargo stove and pop it in there. Just an emergency blanket. I actually have two of these in here. I'll pull one out, but uh, they're really big enough to hold one of us and a child, so we can kind of double up. There's two, there's four of us, two kids, two adults, so each of those. I have some waterproof matches with a little striker on the bottom. I have a 
ferro rod. And this is actually a ferro rod that I did a review on uh, for ultralight backpacking. And um, I, as you guys can see again, it's a two-piece ferro rod. And uh, a viewer was very kind to point out that the bottom is not aluminum, like I said. It's actually magnesium. So like a traditional magnesium uh, rectangular stick like I have in my fire kit where you scrape the magnesium and you can light it, this actually works the same way. And I had no idea. It's black colored magnesium. And then of course the ferro right on the front. So really neat. I have just a really simple uh, mini multi-tool just to have pliers. It's got uh, scissors. It's got even a little saw. Just all your basic stuff. Not super small, so not something I want to necessarily carry, but great for this kind of, uh, of situation. And that's pretty much it. I should say, sorry, there's one more thing. This humongous lighter. I'm not really sure why it's so big. It's in here. I think my son might have stuck it in there, but it's in there for now. And it will definitely work. I'll finish packing this up, and we're going to go inside. All right, guys, so I changed the camera angle to kind of get it a little bit higher. Um, a lot of people will take this stuff out and put it all over the place. I'm kind of a little anal for that. I like to put everything back, so that's why I'm taking my time to put everything back. So pop this open. Front entry, back, uh, front entry pack. It does have the bottom for the sleep system if you were using it that way. It does not have an area in the middle to uh, split the compartments up. It's just one big compartment. So we start at the top here with some extra toiletries. Each of our bags with our um, clothing have some toiletries, but I carry extra. Um, you know, in here is stuff like uh, extra toothpaste, toothbrush, um, alcohol. You can put a little bit of this alcohol on top of one of those cotton swabs and it'll catch light right away. And just some soap, stuff like that. Stuff to help keep us clean. I have this ridiculously large amount of rope, and it's a lot, but for now I keep it. Uh, as, if you guys will remember, I had, uh, or I have a large tarp that I keep with my everyday carry or get home bag, and uh, this would work really well to make a shelter if needed with that tarp, so I keep it around. It's something that may go if I get too heavy because I have the other cordage and it would probably work fine, but um, got this as a gift. And I put it in here. Same thing. A little overkill to have an entire roll of duct tape, but I can carry it. I have room for it right now. And you never know. <laughs> you can't have enough duct tape. Alright, so this is our primary way of heating water for our meals. It's an Esbit a solid fuel stove. I have about 10 cubes of fuel um, in here. And then in the bottom, I also have another uh, about 10 cubes of fuel. So that's 20 cubes of fuel, which is uh, should be okay for the 72-hour mark. Uh, again, I have the Vargo stove that we can use uh, wood. And I think in an emergency situation, I would try to save those solid fuel uh, cubes as much as I can uh, so that we could keep them and use just the wood, which is more of a renewable resource. This is something I keep. Um, it's uh, the food insurance. They sent this. It's a filtration water bottle and then this little cup. Um, I keep it in here right now. I, I kind of have other things that do this. Excuse me. But um, for now, I keep it in there. All right. The second to last thing here is this is just a stuff sack where my ribs front pack came. And in here is the Sawyer all-in-one um, water filter. It's a larger water filter. It has all the things in here, including the instructions on how to do a gravity-fed water filter with a larger reservoir, uh, whether it be a, a, you know, you can make a spigot out of it. And it also, of course, has the liter uh, bags, 64-ounce uh, bags. I have two of those in here, so I can filter as much water as we need. We'll need water, filtered water, fire to heat it, and what we have next with is our, which is our emergency food. And that's actually the last and the largest thing. So let me get that out and I'll show you guys. All right guys, so this is the last part of the bag. This is the actual food. 
and this is what most to me makes it a bug out bag. Um, it's got enough food for one adult for two weeks. But basically what comes in here, it says right on here, um, 14 servings of breakfast, 28 servings of lunch or dinner, and 42 servings of drinks and 14 servings of rice. So this will give all of us basically meals for between three and four days. And we could probably stretch it out more if we had to. Um, and I keep it in the Mylar bag. I'm not going to open it up unless it's needed. And this stuff will last a really long time. Now, that pretty much finishes up the tour of our bug out bag. Now, I'll re-emphasize re this. This is always a work in progress. It is in conjunction with our family bug out bags, our individual bags with the clothing. Uh, one of the things that is missing is uh, water on the go or ready to go. And we usually have water around here. Now, packable, or lots of packable water, is hard, of course, but if we're going somewhere, especially in a car, we'll have water with us. If we're packing water, we're going to have to probably depend on filtration and some smaller bottles that we can fill up. Now, uh, what I wanted out of the bug out bag was a way to make fire for warmth and to boil water, a way to purify water, and I have two good ways to do that in this, whether it be, uh, actually three really, because I have the bottle itself, I have the water purification tablets, but I have the large Sawyer squeeze, which should filter out just about anything and make good water for us. Uh, and lastly, I wanted to be able to take care of things, tools, the crowbar, um, uh, the, the sewing kit, things that our family would need in case of emergency. It also has all the technology that we need with the radio and the two-way radios, all that stuff that we need. So overall, this bag has basically what I think we need right now. Now we're always learning, we're always trying new things, and we're always trying to make this bag better. As things change, uh, we will probably make changes, but the core of our bug out bag, which is tools we need to take care of ourselves, things we need to communicate with each other, food we need to eat, ways to make water safe for us to drink, and ways to make fire for warmth and protection and to purify our water and to boil it for these meals is all taken care of in this bug out bag. So anyway, I really appreciate you guys hanging out with us here on the channel. I hope we find this somewhat informative. This is how we do it on our family, and I hope that y'all learn something from it. I would love comments, suggestions. I'm always looking for things to change. I'm no survival expert, and I by no means think that this is the best bug out bag uh, for everybody. This is currently what I think is best for our family. So anyway, thanks for watching here on Paleo Hiker MD. And I hope you guys enjoy uh, the weekend. I'm going to enjoy this weekend. It's going to be beautiful. Going to do some camping tomorrow with the kids. And I hope everyone has a wonderful weekend and everyone is uh, safe. Thanks for watching.